Welcome to the thrilling world of skateboarding, a dynamic and rebellious sport that has carved its own path through the streets and parks of cities worldwide. The history of the skateboard is a journey marked by innovation, cultural influence, and the undying spirit of those who sought to ride the pavement with style and creativity. Originating in the surf-rich coastal areas of California in the 1950s, the skateboard began as a means for surfers to emulate the sensation of riding waves on land during flat surf periods. From rudimentary wooden planks mounted on roller skate wheels to the sophisticated decks and trucks we know today, the skateboard has undergone a remarkable evolution. In the 1960s, the first commercially available skateboards hit the market, introducing a new form of recreation that quickly captured the imagination of youth. As urethane wheels replaced the primitive clay ones, the skateboard's performance skyrocketed, transforming it from a mere novelty to a legitimate mode of self-expression and athletic prowess. The 1970s witnessed the rise of iconic skateboarding teams like the Z-Boys, whose freewheeling style and innovative tricks revolutionized the sport. The advent of skateboarding contests, media exposure, and the explosive growth of skate culture in the 1980s further solidified skateboarding as a global phenomenon. From the streets of Dogtown to the vert ramps of skate parks, skateboarders began to redefine the possibilities of their craft. The 1990s brought challenges, but the resilient spirit of skateboarding prevailed, leading to a vibrant resurgence in the 2000s and the eventual recognition of skateboarding as an Olympic sport. Join us as we roll through the twists and turns of the skateboard's history, exploring the pioneers, the cultural shifts, and the ever-evolving styles that have shaped this exhilarating pastime. Whether you're a seasoned rider or a curious spectator, the history of the skateboard is a tale of innovation, rebellion, and the unbridled pursuit of freedom on four wheels. Get ready to drop in and experience the thrilling ride that is the history of the skateboard. Early Roots, 1950s The Early Roots, 1950s, phase in the history of skateboarding marks the inception of this recreational activity and its humble beginnings as an offshoot of surfing culture. During the early 1950s, surfers in Southern California, particularly in the surf-rich areas like Venice Beach and Santa Monica, faced a dilemma when the ocean waves were not conducive to surfing. In response to this downtime, surfers sought alternative ways to enjoy the feeling of riding waves. These enterprising surfers came up with the idea of riding on a board with wheels, essentially, surfing on the streets. The earliest skateboards were improvised using wooden planks or boards from discarded roller skates, creating a makeshift contraption that allowed riders to coast along sidewalks and streets. The roller skate wheels were attached to the bottom of the board, and the riders used their bodies to steer and control the direction of movement. These primitive skateboards served as a land-based substitute for surfing, offering surfers a way to practice their maneuvers and maintain their skills even when the ocean conditions were less than ideal. However, it's important to note that during this early stage, skateboarding was more of a casual and localized activity, primarily practiced by surfers in coastal areas of California. The simple act of sidewalk surfing on these early makeshift skateboards laid the groundwork for what would later become a distinct and globally recognized sport. The 1950s set the stage for the subsequent decades of skateboarding evolution, as enthusiasts continued to refine and improve the design of skateboards, leading to the commercialization of skateboarding in the following decades. First Commercial Skateboards, 1960s the first commercial skateboards, 1960s, era marked a crucial turning point in the history of skateboarding, transitioning the activity from a homemade, DIY pastime to a commercially viable and widely available pursuit. During the early 1960s, entrepreneurs recognized the growing interest in skateboarding and began to manufacture and sell the first commercially produced skateboards. Key developments during the first commercial skateboards, 1960s, phase include Manufacturing and Mass Production Entrepreneurs and companies started producing skateboards on a larger scale, moving away from the improvised, homemade versions. These early commercial skateboards featured more standardized components, including wooden decks, metal trucks, axle assemblies, and wheels made of clay or metal. Retail Availability The availability of commercial skateboards in retail outlets marked a significant shift. Skateboards were now sold as complete units in stores, making them accessible to a broader audience. 
This accessibility played a crucial role in popularizing skateboarding beyond its initial geographic and subcultural boundaries. Surfing Influence The influence of surfing culture continued to shape the design and aesthetics of commercial skateboards. Skateboard decks often mimicked the shape of surfboards, and graphics on the boards reflected the vibrant and laid-back style associated with the Southern California surf scene. Polyurethane Wheels A key innovation during this period was the introduction of polyurethane wheels. These wheels provided a smoother ride compared to the earlier clay or metal wheels. The use of polyurethane significantly improved traction, durability, and the overall performance of skateboards. Cultural Awareness The 1960s marked a period of increased cultural awareness and media exposure for skateboarding. Skateboarding began to be featured in magazines and films, contributing to its visibility and attracting a growing number of enthusiasts. Team Sponsorship As skateboarding gained popularity, the concept of sponsored skateboard teams emerged. Skaters who demonstrated skill and style were sponsored by skateboard companies, a practice that would become more prominent in the following decades. While the commercial skateboards of the 1960s were a far cry from the advanced designs seen today, this period laid the foundation for the subsequent evolution of skateboarding as both a recreational activity and a competitive sport. The availability of standardized, commercially produced skateboards set the stage for the explosion of skateboarding culture in the years to come. Surfing Influence and Clay Wheels The influence of surfing and the use of clay wheels during the early days of skateboarding are pivotal aspects of the sport's history, particularly in the 1960s. Surfing Influence Origin and Surf Culture Skateboarding originated as a land-based alternative for surfers when ocean waves were not suitable for surfing. As a result, the culture and style of surfing deeply influenced early skateboarding. Surfers sought to replicate the feeling of riding waves on concrete, and the act of sidewalk surfing was born. Mimicking Surfing Techniques Early skateboarders attempted to emulate the maneuvers and style of surfing on their skateboards. The stance, body movements, and carving techniques used in surfing were adapted to the different dynamics of skateboarding. The skateboard deck itself often resembled the shape of a surfboard, reinforcing the connection between the two activities. Surf-inspired graphics Skateboards in this era often featured graphics and designs inspired by the vibrant and carefree aesthetic of surf culture. Imagery such as waves, surfboards, and beach scenes adorned skateboard decks, further emphasizing the link between surfing and skateboarding. Clay Wheels Early Wheel Materials In the initial stages of skateboarding during the late 1950s and early 1960s, wheels were typically made of clay or metal. These materials, however, had limitations in terms of performance. Clay wheels, in particular, were hard and provided a rough ride, lacking the smoothness and grip needed for an enjoyable skating experience. Challenges of clay wheels Clay wheels had several drawbacks. They were prone to wear and tear, especially on rough surfaces, and lacked the resilience and shock absorption needed for a comfortable ride. Additionally, clay wheels offered limited traction, making it challenging for skateboarders to execute maneuvers effectively. Transition to Urethane Wheels The introduction of polyurethane wheels in the mid-1970s marked a significant shift. Unlike clay wheels, polyurethane wheels were softer, provided better grip, and offered a smoother ride. This innovation revolutionized the skateboarding experience, enhancing maneuverability and enabling skaters to tackle a variety of terrains with greater ease. In summary, the surfing influence on skateboarding during the 1960s was evident in the style, culture, and aesthetic choices of skateboarders. The use of clay wheels, while limited in performance, was a stepping stone toward the subsequent advancements that would shape the evolution of skateboard wheel technology, ultimately contributing to the growth and popularity of skateboarding as a unique and dynamic sport. Urethane Wheels Revolution, 1970s The Urethane Wheels Revolution, 1970s, was a transformative period in the history of skateboarding, marked by the introduction of polyurethane wheels. This innovation revolutionized the sport by addressing significant limitations associated with the previously used clay or metal wheels. 
Here's a closer look at the key aspects of the urethane wheels revolution. Introduction of Polyurethane In the early 1970s, skateboarders embraced a groundbreaking development, the adoption of polyurethane as the primary material for skateboard wheels. This transition was a game-changer for the entire skateboarding industry. Polyurethane proved to be a versatile, durable, and resilient material with properties that significantly improved the performance of skateboard wheels. Improved Shock Absorption One of the notable advantages of polyurethane wheels was their superior shock absorption, compared to the earlier clay wheels. The softer nature of polyurethane allowed for a smoother and more comfortable ride, reducing the impact on skateboarders' joints and providing a better overall skating experience. Enhanced Grip and Traction Polyurethane wheels offered superior grip and traction on various surfaces. Skateboarders could now execute turns and maneuvers with greater precision and control, even on rough or uneven terrain. The improved traction allowed for a more dynamic and versatile style of skateboarding. Increased Durability Polyurethane wheels exhibited increased durability, with better resistance to wear and tear. This longevity was a significant improvement over the fragile nature of clay wheels, contributing to the overall reliability and cost-effectiveness of skateboard equipment. Expansion of Skateboarding Styles The advent of polyurethane wheels facilitated the evolution of different skateboarding styles. Skateboarders could now explore a broader range of tricks and maneuvers, thanks to the enhanced performance of their equipment. This period saw the emergence of freestyle skateboarding, street skating, and the vertical style, vert skating, with the rise of skatepark culture. Proliferation of Skateboarding Culture The improved performance and versatility offered by polyurethane wheels contributed to the growth of skateboarding culture. As skateboarders experimented with new tricks and styles, the sport gained popularity and expanded beyond its California roots. Skateboarding became a global phenomenon, capturing the imagination of youth worldwide. Influence on Skateboarding Industry The adoption of polyurethane wheels not only impacted the experience of individual skateboarders, but also influenced the entire skateboarding industry. Companies began to focus on producing quality skateboard components, leading to innovations in deck shapes, track designs, and other key elements. In summary, the urethane wheels revolution of the 1970s was a pivotal moment that propelled skateboarding into a new era of performance, creativity, and cultural influence. Polyurethane wheels laid the foundation for the diverse and dynamic skateboarding landscape that continues to evolve to this day. This period marked the beginning of skateboarding as we know it, with an ever-expanding array of styles, disciplines, and a global community of skateboard enthusiasts. Zephyr Skate Team, Dogtown NZ Boys The Zephyr Skate Team, also known as the Dogtown NZ Boys, played a groundbreaking role in the history of skateboarding, particularly during the mid-1970s. This iconic skate team originated from the Zephyr Surf Shop located in the Dogtown area of Santa Monica, California. The team's influence on skateboarding culture and its impact on the sport's development are significant. Key Aspects of the Zephyr Skate Team, Dogtown and Z-Boys Formation and Dogtown Connection The Zephyr Skate Team was formed in the early 1970s by Jeff Ho, Skip Engblom, and Craig Stesick at the Zephyr Surf Shop. Dogtown, a neighborhood in Santa Monica, became synonymous with the team's origin, leading to the nickname Dogtown and Z-Boys. Surfers turned skateboarders the Z-Boys consisted of a group of talented individuals who initially gained recognition as surfers. As the popularity of skateboarding grew, the team members transitioned from the waves to the streets, bringing their surfing-influenced style and techniques to the evolving world of skateboarding. Innovative Skateboarding Style The Z-Boys revolutionized skateboarding with their innovative and dynamic style. Drawing inspiration from surfing, they introduced fluid and aggressive maneuvers, carving through empty swimming pools and urban landscapes with a level of creativity and athleticism that set them apart from their contemporaries. Pool Riding and Vertical Skating One of the team's defining contributions was their approach to pool riding. The Z-Boys were pioneers in adapting their surfing-inspired techniques to the curved walls of emptied swimming pools, giving rise to vertical skateboarding or vert skating. This style laid the foundation for modern vert skating, 
which involves performing tricks on ramps and half pipes. Competitive success. The Z-Boys gained recognition and success in various skateboarding competitions, showcasing their innovative tricks and maneuvers. Their success helped elevate the status of skateboarding as a legitimate and respected sport. Media exposure and documentary. The Z-Boys gained widespread attention through magazine features and coverage in skateboarding documentaries. Stacy Peralta, a member of the team, later directed the influential documentary Dogtown and Z-Boys, 2001, which delves into the history and impact of the team, providing a comprehensive look at their influence on the sport. Cultural Legacy The Zephyr Skate team left a lasting cultural legacy, shaping the rebellious and creative spirit associated with skateboarding. Their influence extended beyond the sport itself, impacting fashion, music, and youth culture. The Dogtown and Z-Boys era is often regarded as a golden age in skateboarding history. The Zephyr Skate team, Dogtown and Z-Boys, represents a pivotal moment in the evolution of skateboarding, showcasing how a group of innovative individuals transformed the sport and left an indelible mark on its culture. Their contributions continue to inspire skateboarders and resonate with those who appreciate the rebellious and artistic elements of the sport. Skateboarding Contests and Media Exposure 1970s to 1980s. The era of skateboarding contests and media exposure, 1970s to 1980s, was a critical period that contributed to the growth and popularization of skateboarding as a legitimate sport and cultural phenomenon. During this time frame, skateboarding transitioned from a grassroots activity to a more organized and competitive pursuit, with increased media coverage playing a crucial role in shaping its public image. Key Elements of Skateboarding Contests and Media Exposure, 1970s to 1980s Emergence of Skateboarding Contests Skateboarding contests became a platform for skateboarders to showcase their skills and compete against one another. These events provided opportunities for riders to push the boundaries of what was possible on a skateboard and introduced a competitive element to the sport. National Skateboard Association, NSA the formation of organizations like the National Skateboard Association NSA, in the 1970s helped formalize skateboarding competitions. The NSA played a key role in organizing contests across the United States, providing a structured framework for skaters to participate in regional and national events. Skate Park Competitions The construction of skate parks during this era further fueled the growth of skateboarding contests. Skate parks, featuring ramps, pools, and other obstacles, provided controlled environments for competitions. These contests showcased a variety of skateboarding styles, including freestyle, street skating, and vert skating. Influence of Pool Riding and Vert Skating The influence of pool riding and vert skating, popularized by skaters like the Dogtown and Z-Boys, became prominent in contests. The ability to perform aerial maneuvers and tricks on vertical ramps and halfpipes became a focal point of competitions, with skaters like Tony Hawk and Christian Hasoy gaining recognition for their vert skills. Media coverage The 1970s and 1980s saw an increase in media coverage of skateboarding. Magazines like Skateboarder played a crucial role in documenting the emerging skate culture, featuring photos, articles, and coverage of skateboarding contests. This media exposure helped bring the sport to a wider audience. Skateboarding Documentaries and Films Documentaries and films, such as Skateboard Madness, 1979, and The Bones Brigade Video Show, 1984, provided cinematic representations of the skateboarding subculture and showcased the talent and creativity of skateboarders. These productions contributed to the cultural identity of skateboarding. Tony Hawk's Rise to Prominence Tony Hawk, one of the most influential skateboarders of all time, rose to prominence during this period. His exceptional skills in vert skating, including landing the first documented 900 in 1999, catapulted him to stardom. Hawk's success not only elevated the profile of skateboarding, but also made him a household name. Transition to Street Skating As the 1980s progressed, street skating gained prominence, with skaters like Rodney Mullen pioneering flatland tricks and creative maneuvers. 
The transition to street skating expanded the range of tricks and styles seen in competitions, further diversifying the sport. In summary, the era of skateboarding contests and media exposure, 1970s to 1980s, marked a period of maturation for skateboarding as a sport and cultural phenomenon. The combination of organized competitions, increased media coverage, and the emergence of influential skateboarders helped shape the narrative of skateboarding and laid the groundwork for its continued evolution in the decades that followed. Street Skating and Freestyle Evolution, 1980s The era of street skating and freestyle evolution, 1980s, marked a significant shift in the landscape of skateboarding, introducing new styles, maneuvers, and locations that would redefine the sport. During this period, street skating emerged as a dominant and influential form of skateboarding, complemented by the ongoing evolution of freestyle skateboarding. Key Elements of Street Skating and Freestyle Evolution, 1980s Transition to Urban Environments Street skating refers to the practice of skateboarding in urban environments, utilizing everyday features such as stairs, handrails, curbs, benches, and ledges as obstacles and elements for tricks. This departure from traditional skate parks and vertical ramps marked a profound evolution in the sport. Pioneering Street Skaters Skaters like Rodney Mullen, Mark Gonzalez, Nadas Coppice, and Tommy Guerrero played pivotal roles in the rise of street skating. Rodney Mullen, in particular, is credited with inventing numerous freestyle tricks and contributing to the foundation of modern street skating with his technical flatland maneuvers. Flatland Tricks and Freestyle Evolution Freestyle skateboarding continued to evolve, with skaters pushing the boundaries of what was possible on flat surfaces. Rodney Mullen's innovations in flatland tricks, such as the ollie, kickflip, and impossible, influenced the technical aspects of street skating and freestyle, creating a bridge between the two styles. The Ollie Revolution the invention of the ollie, a fundamental skateboarding maneuver where the rider pops the board into the air without using their hands, was a game-changer. Alan Ollie Gelfand is credited with popularizing this technique in the late 1970s, and it became a foundational element for street skating, providing skaters with a versatile and dynamic tool for aerial maneuvers. Skateboarding Videos and Media Influence the availability of skateboarding videos and media during the 1980s played a crucial role in showcasing the evolution of street skating and freestyle. Videos like Powell Peralta's The Bones Brigade Video Show, 1984, featured the innovative styles of skaters like Rodney Mullen and Tony Hawk, influencing a generation of skateboarders. Skateboarding Companies and Brands Skateboarding companies and brands played a significant role in promoting and shaping the evolution of street skating. The emergence of influential brands like Powell Peralta, Santa Cruz Skateboards, and Vision Street were contributed to the commercialization and mainstream visibility of street skating culture. Street Skating Competitions With the rise of street skating, competitions began to incorporate street elements into their formats. Contests like the street style events allowed skaters to showcase their skills in real-world urban settings, further solidifying street skating as a competitive discipline. Cultural Impact Street skating had a profound impact on the cultural perception of skateboarding. The rebellious and creative nature of navigating urban landscapes resonated with a broader audience, contributing to the sport's cultural influence and shaping the image of skateboarding in the public eye. In summary, the street skating and freestyle evolution of the 1980s not only transformed the way skateboarders approached their craft, but also played a crucial role in elevating skateboarding's cultural status. The fusion of technical flatland tricks, the influence of urban environments, and the creative use of everyday obstacles laid the foundation for the diverse and dynamic street skateboarding culture seen today. Vert Ramp and Skatepark Boom, 1980s to 1990s The period of Vert Ramp and Skatepark Boom, 1980s to 1990s, in skateboarding history was characterized by a surge in the construction of skate parks, with a particular focus on vertical ramps. This era had a profound impact on the development of vert skating, creating dedicated spaces for skateboarders to showcase their aerial skills and fostering a sense of community within the skateboarding culture. Key Elements of the Vert Ramp and Skatepark Boom, 1980s to 1990s Popularity of Vert Skating 
Vert skating, characterized by performing tricks and maneuvers on vertical ramps, gained significant popularity during the 1980s. Skaters like Tony Hawk and Christian Hasoy became synonymous with vert skating, showcasing their abilities to catch air, perform aerial tricks, and execute complex maneuvers on ramps with varying degrees of verticality. Construction of Vertical Ramps Skate parks began to feature purpose-built vertical ramps, also known as halfpipes or vert ramps. These ramps were constructed with two opposing transitions that formed a U-shape, allowing skaters to achieve height and perform aerial tricks, including grabs, spins, and flips. The height and transition radius of the ramps varied, providing opportunities for skaters of different skill levels. Skate Park Boom The 1980s witnessed a boom in the construction of skate parks, both publicly funded and privately owned. Municipalities recognized the popularity of skateboarding and sought to provide safe and designated spaces for skaters. Skate parks became hubs for the skateboarding community, fostering camaraderie and serving as platforms for skill progression. Influence of Skate Park Design Skate park design evolved during this era, incorporating various features beyond just vertical ramps. Skate parks began to include bowls, mini ramps, street obstacles, and other elements that catered to different styles of skateboarding. This diversity in design allowed skaters to explore and express their creativity in different ways. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Video Game The release of the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater video game series in the late 1990s played a significant role in popularizing vert skating and skate park culture. The video game featured virtual renditions of famous skate parks and allowed players to experience the thrill of vert skating contributing to the mainstream appeal of the sport. Competitions and Tours Vert skating competitions and tours became prominent during this period. Events like the Hoopla series and the Boom Boom Huck Jam showcased the talents of vert skaters and brought together audiences to witness high-flying tricks and stunts. These competitions played a crucial role in elevating the profiles of vert skaters. Impact on Skateboarding Culture the proliferation of skate parks and the popularity of vert skating had a lasting impact on skateboarding culture. Skate parks became central hubs for skateboarders to gather, practice, and share experiences. The sense of community fostered in these spaces contributed to the growth and sustainability of skateboarding as a lifestyle and sport. Challenges and Decline Despite the initial boom, some skate parks faced challenges, including maintenance issues, lack of proper management, and public perception concerns. Many skate parks from this era experienced a decline in the 1990s and early 2000s. However, renewed interest and advocacy efforts have led to the revitalization of skate park culture in recent years. In summary, the vert ramp and skate park boom of the 1980s to 1990s left an indelible mark on skateboarding history. The construction of vert ramps and skate parks not only provided dedicated spaces for skaters to progress their skills, but also contributed to the cultural fabric of skateboarding, shaping the sport's identity and fostering a sense of community among skateboarders. Decline and Resurgence, 1990s to 2000s The period of decline and resurgence, 1990s to 2000s, in skateboarding history was marked by a complex interplay of factors that led to a temporary downturn in the popularity of the sport followed by a remarkable resurgence. Several key elements contributed to this dynamic period. Industry Challenges In the early 1990s, the skateboarding industry faced challenges, including economic downturns and changes in consumer preferences. Many skateboarding companies struggled financially, and skateboarding's mainstream appeal waned. Public Perception Skateboarding faced negative stereotypes and misconceptions, often associated with rebellious or delinquent behavior. Some municipalities responded to this perception by implementing restrictions on skateboarding in public spaces, leading to the closure of skate parks and limiting opportunities for skaters. Changes in Skateboarding Styles the 1990s saw a shift in skateboarding styles, with street skating gaining prominence over vert skating. Street skating, characterized by tricks performed on urban obstacles like stairs, handrails, and ledges, became the dominant style. This shift contributed to a decline in the popularity of vert ramps and skate parks. Innovations in Skateboarding 
Despite the challenges, the 1990s also witnessed innovations in skateboarding. Rodney Mullen, for example, continued to push the boundaries with the invention of new flatland tricks. Additionally, the rise of influential street skaters like Mark Gonzalez and Guy Mariano helped redefine street skating and inspire a new generation of skateboarders. X Games and Mainstream Exposure The X Games, an extreme sports competition launched in 1995, played a pivotal role in bringing skateboarding back into the mainstream spotlight. Skateboarding competitions within the X Games, featuring vert and street events, showcased the athleticism and creativity of skateboarders to a global audience. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Video Game The release of the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater video game series in the late 1990s had a profound impact on skateboarding's resurgence. The game, featuring realistic skateboarding simulation and a soundtrack featuring punk and alternative music, played a key role in introducing skateboarding to a new generation of fans. Cultural Influence Skateboarding's cultural influence expanded in the 2000s, with the sport becoming an integral part of youth culture. Skateboarding fashion, music, and art became intertwined with the broader cultural landscape, contributing to the sport's overall appeal. DIY Skate Parks and Community Efforts in response to limited access to skate parks, skateboarders initiated DIY, do-it-yourself, skate park projects. These grassroots efforts, often built by skaters for skaters, demonstrated the resilience and resourcefulness of the skateboarding community. Community-led initiatives also played a role in advocating for more skate-friendly urban spaces. Global Growth and Inclusivity Skateboarding's resurgence in the 2000s was not limited to the United States. The sport experienced significant growth on a global scale, with skateboarding communities flourishing in countries around the world. The inclusivity of skateboarding, with its emphasis on creativity and individual expression, contributed to its widespread popularity. In summary, the decline and resurgence period in skateboarding history was characterized by a temporary setback in the 1990s, followed by a remarkable comeback fueled by cultural shifts, innovations, and a renewed sense of community. The sport's ability to adapt, along with the efforts of dedicated skateboarders and advocates, contributed to its enduring popularity and global influence. Modern Era, 2000s Present The modern era, 2000s present, in skateboarding history encompasses a period marked by continued growth, evolution, and global mainstream acceptance of the sport. During this time, skateboarding has experienced unprecedented levels of popularity, cultural influence, and recognition as both a lifestyle and a legitimate athletic pursuit. Key Elements of the Modern Era, 2000s, Present Olympic Inclusion One of the most significant developments in the modern era is the inclusion of skateboarding in the Olympic Games. Skateboarding made its Olympic debut at the 2021 Tokyo Summer Olympics, with both street and park disciplines. The Olympic platform has provided skateboarders with increased visibility and legitimacy on the global stage. Street League Skateboarding, SLS Street League Skateboarding, founded in 2010 by professional skateboarder Rob Durdek, has played a crucial role in organizing high-profile street skateboarding competitions. SLS events attract top skateboarders and provide a structured competitive platform, contributing to the professionalization of the sport. Evolution of Skateboarding Styles The modern era has witnessed a continued evolution of skateboarding styles. Street skating remains popular, with skaters pushing the boundaries of technical tricks and creativity on urban obstacles. Vert skating, bowl skating, and various hybrid styles have also flourished, showcasing the diversity within the skateboarding community. Media and Digital Influence Digital media, including social platforms like Instagram, YouTube, and online skateboarding communities, has played a central role in shaping skateboarding culture. Skateboarders now share their tricks, edits, and experiences with a global audience, contributing to the democratization of skateboarding content creation. Skateboarding industry growth The skateboarding industry has experienced significant growth, with numerous skateboarding brands, companies, and collaborations emerging. Skateboarding equipment, apparel, and accessories have become more diverse, reflecting the fusion of skate culture with broader fashion and lifestyle trends. 
DIY and community-led projects. DIY, do-it-yourself, skate park projects and community-led initiatives have continued to thrive, showcasing the resilience and creativity of the skateboarding community. Skaters take an active role in building and maintaining their own skate spots, fostering a sense of ownership and community engagement. Increased diversity and inclusivity. The modern era has seen a positive shift toward increased diversity and inclusivity in skateboarding. More skateboarders from different backgrounds, genders, and ages are participating in the sport, challenging traditional stereotypes and contributing to a more inclusive skateboarding culture. Skateboarding as a lifestyle. Skateboarding has solidified its status as not just a sport, but also a lifestyle and form of self-expression. The ethos of individual creativity, freedom, and nonconformity remains central to skateboarding culture, influencing art, fashion, music, and broader youth culture. Continued innovation in tricks and equipment. Skateboarders in the modern era continue to innovate, pushing the limits of what is possible on a skateboard. New tricks, combinations, and styles constantly emerge, fueled by a spirit of experimentation and progression. Equipment advancements, including deck shapes and technology, also contribute to the evolution of skateboarding. Global Skateboarding Community The modern era has witnessed the globalization of skateboarding, with a vibrant and interconnected global community. Skateboarding events, collaborations, and cultural exchanges occur on an international scale, contributing to the rich tapestry of the skateboarding experience. In summary, the modern era of skateboarding, spanning from the 2000s to the present, is characterized by the sport's continued growth, diversification, and cultural impact. Skateboarding has transcended its subcultural roots to become a mainstream and globally recognized activity, all while maintaining its core values of creativity, individuality, and community. The history of the skateboard is a journey that spans decades, marked by innovation, cultural evolution, and a profound impact on the lives of countless individuals. From its humble origins as a wooden plank mounted on roller skate wheels to its current status as a globally recognized sport and cultural phenomenon, skateboarding has undergone a remarkable transformation. Throughout its history, skateboarding has been a testament to the creativity and resilience of those who embraced it. From the pioneering days of surf-influenced styles and empty swimming pool sessions to the rebellious spirit of street skating and the adrenaline-fueled heights of vert ramps, skateboarders have constantly pushed the boundaries of what is possible on four wheels. The ebb and flow of skateboarding's popularity, from its decline in the 1990s to its resurgence and inclusion in the Olympic Games, reflect not only shifts in cultural tastes but also the enduring spirit of a community that thrives on passion and individual expression. Skateboarding's influence extends beyond the ramps and streets, it permeates fashion, music, art, and a lifestyle characterized by creativity and nonconformity. The sport's ability to adapt to changing times, embrace diversity, and foster a global community speaks to its timeless appeal. As we reflect on the history of the skateboard, it becomes clear that this simple wooden plank with wheels has become a symbol of freedom, innovation, and the pursuit of personal expression. Whether navigating the urban landscape, conquering a vert ramp, or sharing tricks online, skateboarders continue to shape the narrative of a sport that has transcended its subcultural roots to become an integral part of mainstream culture. The history of the skateboard is an ongoing story, one that continues to be written by the skaters who push the boundaries, challenge norms, and revel in the joy of riding on four wheels. As the skateboard evolves, its rich legacy lives on, inspiring new generations to drop in, roll with the flow, and find their own path in the ever-expanding world of skateboarding.